Journey to the West, an audio drama series. Chapter Three, Part Two. We spoke of Wu Kong's trip to the East Sea, and now he has returned. Look at the Monkey King, parting the waves and landing back on the sheet iron bridge. The four old monkeys were waiting next to the bridge, with other monkeys behind them. What they saw was a golden Wu Kong suddenly leaping out of the waves without a drop of water on him before heading on the bridge. All the monkeys were so frightened they all knelt down to say, "Great King, what dazzling colors! What dazzling colors!" Wu Kong beamed as he went on his high throne, leaving the iron rod standing in the middle of the floor. The monkeys were curious, so they all came to grab the treasure. However, it was like dragonflies hitting against an iron tree. The thing didn't move, not even one small bit. So they all bit their fingers and stuck out their tongues at it, asking, "Oh, my kindred lord, it's so heavy! How did you even bring it back?" Wu Kong walked forward, opened his palm, and grabbed it in his hand as he laughed to the crowd. Everything has its rightful owner. His darling was fixed in the sea's treasury for who knows how many thousands and hundreds of years, but it so happened that it started emitting light just this year. The Dragon King only considered it a piece of dark iron, and called it the divine rarity, fixing the bottom of the heavenly river. None of his people could carry this thing, so they invited me to take it myself. At first, this treasure was over two zhang long and wide as a dipper. After I held it, I wasn't too pleased with how huge it was, so it turned smaller. I wanted it to shrink smaller still, and so it did. I asked again, and it grew even smaller. I quickly observed it under the light from above and saw a line was written on it: "Compliant golden hoop rod, weighing thirteen thousand and five hundred jin." This bears you all. Let me order it to make some changes. He bounds the treasure in hand, yelling, "Smaller, smaller, smaller!" In an instant, it shrunk into the size of a sewing needle and could be stuck hidden in the ear. The monkeys were awestruck, shouting, "Great King, do take it out and play some more tricks!" The Monkey King indeed took it out from his ear and placed it on his palm, yelling. Bigger, 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 and so it grew bigger to the thickness of a dipper and measured two zhang long. As he got excited, he jumped on the bridge and went out of the cave. Gripping the treasure in his hand, he performed the magic of cosmic imitation. Bending his waist, he shouted, "Grow!" And grow he did. To ten thousand zhang tall, that would be over thirty-three kilometers. His head was the size of Tai Shan, the formidable Mount Tai. His waist was the size of high mountain ranges. His eyes sparkled as if shooting lightning. His mouth wide like a basin of blood, and his teeth were like swords and halberds. The rod in his hand now had its top end against the Thriastrimsha, heaven of thirty-three, and its bottom end reaching the eighteen layers of hell. All the beasts and monsters across the mountains, including the monster kings of the seventy-two caves, were so terrified they began kowtowing in awe, as if their souls had left their bodies. Then. In the blink of the eye, Wu Kong withdrew his imitations and turned the treasure back to a sewing needle before hiding it in his ear. As he returned to his cave, all the frightened monster kings from other caves arrived to congratulate him, and so flags were waved, drums were beaten, and gongs can be heard loud and clear. A banquet of the rarest delicacies was presented to all. As cups were filled with coconut and grape wine, 
Wu Kong drank with his guests for a good while before resuming training. He appointed the four old monkeys as his valiant generals, with the two red bottom monkeys as Marshal Ma and Liu, and the two elastic armed apes as generals Peng and Ba. Everything, from setting up camps to giving out reward and punishment, were handed over to the four valiant generals to handle. Feeling at ease now, Wukong then spent his days soaring on the cloud, traveling across the four seas and having fun in all the mountains of the world. He would show off his martial arts on his visits to heroes, and many an illustrious friend was made when he performed magical tricks. At this time, he joined with others to form a fraternal alliance of seven. The alliance included Niu Mo Wang, the Bow Monster King, Jiao Mo Wang, the Jiao Monster King, with Jiao being a different variety of dragon from their counterparts in the seas, Peng Mo Wang, the Peng Monster King, with Peng being the giant bird from the legends, Shi Tuo Wang, King of Lions, Mi Ho Wang, King of Macaques, Yu Rong Wang, King of the Long-Tailed Golden Monkeys, and lastly, the Handsome Monkey King. Every day, the seven of them enjoyed discussions of all sorts of topics as they shared wine and appreciated music and dances. They left at morning and returned at dusk, not missing out on a single fun thing. The longest distance was nothing but a walk in the garden. It could be said that with a nod of the head, they have passed three thousand li, equivalent to almost fifteen hundred kilometers, and with a twist of the waist, more than eight hundred li, or almost four hundred kilometers, were covered. One day, Wu Kong ordered the four valiant generals to arrange a banquet in the main cave. And sent out invitations to the other six kings. They first killed livestock to serve as sacrifice for heaven and earth. Then they ordered the monsters to dance and sing as entertainment before drinking themselves into oblivion. After sending the other six kings home, Wu Kong went on to give out rewards to the various officials. Later, he leaned into the shade of a pine tree. Next to the sheet iron bridge, before soon falling asleep, the four valiant generals gathered their troops around him as protection, and none dared to raise their voices. As the handsome monkey king dozed off, he saw two people with a summons in hand. On it were three characters: Sun Wu Kong. The pair approached him. And without warning, tied him up with ropes and dragged away the soul of the handsome monkey king. Swaying and stumbling, he was brought to the gate of a city. The monkey king was slowly waking up from his drunken stupor when suddenly he looked up to find an iron plate above the city gate. On it were three characters: Yu Ming Jie, meaning the world. Of darkness, the handsome monkey king snapped into alarm, asking, "The world of darkness is where King Yan lives. Why are we here?" The pair answered, "Your life in the world above has come to an end. We have received the summons to bring you here." The monkey king heard this and said, "I, Elder Sun." Exists beyond the three realms, and I'm unrestrained by the five faces. I no longer fall under his jurisdiction. Why is he so confused? He dared to take me. The two death collectors only kept on pulling and dragging, determined to take him inside the city. The monkey king went into a fury, pulling the treasure from his ear, and with a swing he made it thick as a rice bowl. With a mere lift of his hand, he beat the two death collectors to mince meat. He untied himself, and with his hands liberated, he grabbed the rod and fought his way into the city. So terrified, Oxhead hid for his safety, and Horseface 
ran for its life. Ox said and Horseface, you see, are the two prominent guardians of the underworld. All the ghost soldiers then raised to Sun Lord the end, the Hall of Diversity, reporting, Grey King's disaster, absolute disaster, that there is a hairy faced Thunder God fighting his way in. Thunder God, or Lei Gong, meaning the revered man of thunder, is a god in charge of unleashing thunder. He is believed to have a sharp chin. Monkeys happen to also have sharp chins. That was why Wukong would since be called the hairy faced thunder god. In panic, all ten kings of the underworld, including King Yan, tidy their clothes before coming forward to find their fierce intruder. The ten of them immediately line up by rank and said loudly, Revered Immortal, please state your name. Revered Immortal, please state your name. The Monkey King answered, If you do not know me, why send people to collect me? The ten kings answered, We dare not, we dare not. But the dispatch must have made a mistake. The Monkey King said, I am the natural-born sage Sun Wukong of the Water Curtain Cave on the Mountain of Flower and Fruit. What are your posts? The Ten Kings bowed and answered, We are the emperors in the world of the dead, the Ten Kings of the Underworld. Wukong said, State your names now and spare yourselves a beating. The Ten Kings answered, we are King Qin Guang, King Chu Jiang, King Song Di, King Wu Guan, King Yan Luo, King Ping Deng, King Tai Shan, King Du Shi, King Bian Cheng, and King Zhuan Lun. Wu Kong said, Since you have all claimed a throne, you should be among the effective and aware. Why didn't you have a sense of right and wrong? I, Elderson, was cultivated by the weight of the immortal. I shall live as long as heaven, a buffer beyond the three realms, and unrestrained by the five faces. Why did you send people to arrest me? The Ten Kings explained, Please calm your anger, revered immortal. But there are many who share the same names in this world. It must be that the death collectors have visited the wrong person. Wukong retorted, Nonsense, nonsense. As the saying goes, blame the official, blame the clerk, but never blame the dispatch. Quickly, go bring me the register of life and death. The ten kings heard this and immediately invited him into the hall for examination. Gripping the compliant rod, Wukong rose to the top of the hall of diversity and sat down in the middle seat facing south. The south-facing seat, you see, is reserved only for the most distinguished and honourable in the room. Just then, the ten kings have ordered the presiding judge to bring out the documents for examination. The judge dare not slack off and went into the office, coming back with several stacks of documents, making up the ten categories of register. Wukong checked through them one by one. There were the files of the following. Luo Chong, meaning hairless animals, which refer to humans as well as other bipedal, human-like creatures. Mao Chong, hairy animals, roughly referring to mammals. Yu Chong, feathered animals, roughly referring to birds. Quin Chong, numerous animals, roughly referring to insects. Lin Jie, the scaled and armored, roughly referring to fish and crustaceans. Yet none of the above registers had his name. He went on to search in the registers for monkeys. Turn out, monkeys may look like humans, but they were not registered with human names. They resemble hairless animals, but they do not dwell within the borders of a nation. They resemble walking beasts, but they are not ruled by the legendary beast of Qilin. 
They also resemble flying birds, but they are not ruled by the legendary bird of Phoenix. Monkeys have a register of their own. Wu Kong examined it in person and flipped all the way to the heading of Hun, meaning soul. One thousand three hundred and fiftieth entry under this heading was where he found his own name, Sun Wu Kong. The entry went. Natural-born stone monkey, destined to live three hundred and forty-two years, a peaceful death. Wu Kong said, "I don't remember how long I have lived. Now let me just erase the name and call it a day. Hand me a brush." The judge handed him a brush in haste, with his tip soaked in thick ink. Wu Kong grabbed the register, and so every individual. As long as they appeared in the monkey register, was crossed out. Throwing the register shut, he said, "A done deal, done deal. Now, from now on, I'm none of your business." With the rod clearing his path, he fought his way out of the world of darkness. The ten kings dare not come close. They all instead went to Cui Yun Gong, the Jade Cloud Palace, to visit. 地藏王菩萨 also known as Kshitigakpa Bodhisattva. They discussed writing a report and filed a complaint to heaven above. We will speak no more of that. As the monkey king fought his way out from the city, he suddenly tripped on a clump of grass and fell over, snapping a wick. It had only been a dream. He was just stretching when he heard the four valiant generals calling with the other monkeys. Quick, Hing! How much wine did you consume? You've been asleep all night and are only waking up just now. Wu Kong said, "Falling asleep is nothing. I dreamt of two people coming to drag me all the way to the gate into the world of darkness. I only knew where I was then. I had to show off my magical tricks and made my protest all the way into the hall of diversity." I argued with the ten kings there and checked our register of life and death. Wherever our names showed up, I crossed them out. So now none of us are their business. The monkeys all cowed out in thanks. Since then, many mountain monkeys never seem to grow old. It was because their names are no longer in the underworld offices. When the handsome monkey king was done telling his story. The four valiant generals sent out reports to the monster kings of the various caves. They all came to give their congratulations. Soon, his other six sworn brothers also came to congratulate him. When they heard the story about Wu Kong crossing out his own name, they were all delighted as well. They celebrated and rejoiced every day. We will now speak no more on that. We instead turn to the supreme sage of the high skies, the greatly benevolent high ruler of the divine heavens, the Jade Emperor. On this particular day, he arrived at the treasure hall of miraculous mist, in the cloud palace of golden towers. As he gathered his immortal officials, both civil and military, for a morning court session, suddenly Qiu Hongzi Zhen Ren, or Qiu Hongzi the Perfected. Came up to report, Your Majesty, Ao Guang, Dragon King of the East Sea, has a report to present and awaits outside the Hall of Omnipresent Brightness for your command to enter. The Jade Emperor then released the following order: Send him in to report. Ao Guang was then ordered to come into the Hall of Miraculous Mist. After paying respect to the throne, an immortal youth in charge of reception came near to hand deliver the Dragon King's memorial. The Jade Emperor read it from the start. The memorial detailed the havoc Sun Wukong created in the East Sea, and how this fiendish immortal bullied all the Dragon Kings and sea creatures. The Dragon King closed his complaint with the following. He indeed was invincible and hard to control. Your subject hereby presents this memorial and humbly requests for imperial justice.
I beg that you send heavenly soldiers to subdue this fiend, so that tranquillity may be restored in the world, and peace brought back to the waters. The sage and emperor read it and released an order. Please send the dragon god back to the seas. We will appoint a general to arrest him. The old dragon king gratefully kowtowed and left. Then, down below came forth Ge Xianwang Tianshi, or elderly immortal Ge, who served as the scholar of heaven, reporting, Your Majesty, King Qin Guang, from the office of the underworld has arrived with a report to present, written by the religious leader of the underworld, Shitgapra Bodhisattva. An immortal girl in charge of message delivery came near to hand-deliver the memorial. The Jade Emperor again read it from the beginning. It spoke of the importance of the underworld and its rules, and how births and deaths were predestined and not subject to change. Then they detailed how Sun Wukong bullied them into deleting all the monkeys from the register, granting these mere animals a long life. The report concluded with the following. We humbly request the deployment of immortal troops to subdue this fiend. Only then could the balance of yin and yang be restored and the underworld return to peace. The Jade Emperor finished reading and released an order, saying, Tell the King of Darkness to return to the underworld. We will appoint a general to arrest him. King Qin Guang, too, gratefully kowtowed and left. The Jade Emperor gathered his officials and asked, On which year was this fiendish monkey born? Which generation was his origin? How did he obtain such great powers? He was barely finished when among the ranks came forward far-seeing eyes and far-hearing ears. They reported, This monkey was a stone monkey born from nature herself three hundred years ago. Not much attention was paid back then. We have no idea where he cultivated into an immortal in recent years to the point of subduing dragons and tigers, even deleting his name from the death register. The Jade Emperor asked, which one of you immortal generals will go to the world below to tame him? Before he finished, out came the great white star of longevity, also known as Tai Bai Jin Xing, the great white gold star, with the gold star being planet Venus. He prostrated himself and said, My revered sage, any being within the three realms who possess the nine openings is able to cultivate and become an immortal. Somehow, this monkey was a body nurtured by heaven and earth and birthed by the sun and moon. And so he stood upright with the skies above him and walked the ground below, feeding on dew and mist. Now he has found the way to immortality and is capable of subduing dragons and tigers. How is he different from a human? Your subject would like your majesty to be merciful towards the process of birth and growth, and instead issue an imperial edict of pacification. Have him summoned to the realm above, grant him a post of some sort, put his name on the register, and you will have him safely constrained here. If he accepts the heavenly command, we can promote and reward him later. Should he go against the heavenly command, we can arrest him on the spot. On one hand, there would be no need to bother the troops. And on the other hand, it is an exhibition of our principled actions in accepting a new immortal. The Jade Emperor was delighted to hear this and said, do as you suggested. And so he ordered 
文曲星官 officer of the star Wen Qu, who specialized in literary and political prowess, to draft an edict and send the great white gold star on the strip of pacification. The gold star received the edict and left through the southern gate of heaven. As he landed his auspicious cloud and came all the way to the water curtain cave of the mountain of flower and fruit, he said to the many little monkeys, "I am a celestial messenger sent by heaven. Here's an imperial edict, inviting your great king to visit the realm of Bath. Go quickly to inform him." The little monkeys from outside of the cave. Pass the message on one by one, all the way to the death of the hidden paradise, telling Wu Kong, "Great King, there is an old man outside carrying a document on his back. He said he's a celestial messenger sent by heaven, and has got an imperial edict as invitation for you." The handsome monkey king heard this and was thrilled, saying. I've just been thinking about having a stroll up there these couple of days, and a messenger from heaven happens to visit. He then added, "Invite him in now." The monkey king hurriedly tidied his clothes and crown and welcomed his guest from outside the gate. The gold star walked straight in amid them, then stood still, facing south, declaring, "I am the great white gold star of the west." By the order of this imperial edict of pacification from the Jade Emperor, I have come to the world below to invite you to heaven and be accepted into the register of immortals. Wu Kong laughed and said, "I would like to thank the old star for coming down." He then ordered the little ones to arrange a banquet to entertain the guest. The gold star said. As I am bearing an imperial edict, I dare not remain here for long. Please come with me immediately, Great King. Once you have received your honorable promotion, we can talk more at your leisure. Wu Kong said, "We are honored by your presence. Apologies for making you leave unentertained. Apologies." He then summoned the four valiant generals and ordered. Remain vigilant in training the young ones. Allow me to go up and have a look round, so I can bring you all there to live together. The four valiant generals received their orders. The monkey king then mounted the cloud with the gold star and rose into the skies. Truly, position of high rank and the heavenly immortal he will ascend among the class in the clouds and register of treasure. Will be his name. We do not know what position he will be appointed to. Please wait until the next chapter. <laughs>